Welcome everyone to Catholic Sunday Scriptures in This is a ministry of the Augustinian Order and St. Paul's Parish in South Philadelphia. This weekend we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our first reading today comes from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly, and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. So obviously, <clears throat> this reading uh, is part of wisdom literature, and uh, it was written originally probably around the year 200 BC, and then it was in its Greek version that we have probably around the year 125 BC. And at the time this was written, there was a struggle between Greek culture and Hebrew culture. Alexander the Great had conquered the world and spread the Greek language and Greek ideas and Greek culture. And uh, the Hebrews felt that they were a minority, especially in Alexandria and Egypt where this book was written. And so here we have the difference between Greek wisdom and Hebrew wisdom. And Hebrew wisdom is based upon the covenant that they have with Yahweh and the books of the law. And the purpose of this passage is to help us understand how we can earn God's mercy. And that's by being attentive to the poor because the Lord hears their cry. He doesn't play favorites, but he certainly hears the voice of the oppressed. <coughs> God has a preferential option for the poor. The prophets repeatedly denounced oppression and exploitation of the poor. And we saw that a few weeks ago from the prophet Amos and certainly is a message in the prophet Isaiah. And we see in this reading that the poor and the humble rely on God as their strength and because he responds and hears their prayers. Our second reading comes from the second letter to Timothy, which we've been hearing from the last few weeks. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first offense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. So as I mentioned in the past, we don't think that the second letter to Timothy was written by Paul. However, this passage seems to be genuine. It is written in the style, language, and metaphors of Paul. So uh, it was probably added to this letter at some later point. A libation is a sacrifice, uh, usually of wine, and you would take the first glass of wine and you would pour it into the ground and offer it to the gods, and Paul sees his life as that, and the wine was sort of a replacement for blood sacrifice. The word here, departure, is in the sense of a military, you know, breaking camp, and he is following orders, the orders that God gave him. And basically we hear and hear that, uh, you know, even though people deserted him and because they were afraid for their own lives, God made something great out of this. And those who were in the court uh, heard him proclaim his faith in Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, he was able to proclaim the gospel through his suffering. Paul knows that death is near. You know, God has saved him over and over again, but he realizes that now he must bear witness with his life. Uh, he is like Christ. He is bereft of human support. At the, you know, even the apostles fled on the day of crucifixion. 
However, the Lord has stood by him and has been his strength, and he will go down fighting, and the Lord rewards those who remain faithful. See, our gospel is from Luke chapter 18, the story of the uh, Pharisee and the public. So Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisees took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. So here Jesus does what he's done before, like he takes the Samaritan and makes the Samaritan the hero. So obviously the tax collector was despised by the people because he was working for the Romans almost against his own people. And the Pharisee was viewed as a religious authority. And what the Pharisee is doing here is standard prayer. He should stand up. That's what they. That's the way they prayed. And instead of fasting just on the prescribed day, he fasts twice a week. He pays tithes on his whole income, not just on his salary. And so he uh, boasts about his accomplishments. So this chapter, chapter 17, begins material on the impending judgment and how God will judge us. And this story is really about self-righteousness. It's not about prayer. The Pharisee offers a prayer of thanksgiving, but his attitude is wrong. The prayer is focused on himself. That was a key line in there. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. He really wasn't addressing God. He wanted everybody to know how successful he was. He raised himself up by lowering others. He, uh, he wasn't good in and of himself. He was just better than the publican. You know, for many people, that's their uh, mode of holiness. You know, I didn't commit any murders. I didn't rob banks. Well, if you're comparing yourself to Al Capone and to uh, Osama bin Laden, then maybe you are holy. But if you compare yourself to Mother Teresa, you know, that's a different standard. Justification depends on God's mercy, not on our works. And the Pharisee asks for nothing and receives nothing, as where the publican asked for mercy and that was given him. Thank you for listening. Please continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. If you think this would be helpful to someone, please pass it on. Thank you very much.